A very warm welcome to St. Mary's Parish Church, Haddenham. My name is Gordon Kurt, and I'm a member of the ministry team here. You may have joined us for the first time, or you may be a regular, but you're all welcome. Folk have come here for over a thousand years. They've come in times of great trouble, war, plague, and disaster. But they've come to worship the living God, the loving Father of all. They have frequently found this very encouraging in times of great distress. And the theme of our service today is encouragement. We're going to begin our worship with a great hymn of encouragement. Great is thy faithfulness, we sing to God. And now a greeting from Psalm 42. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. And would you join me in this prayer? Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, 
all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now some prayers of penitence. We have gathered here to worship God, but are conscious of our unworthiness to do so. Jesus challenged the hypocrisy of people who honour God with their lips, but their hearts are far away from him. So let us say sorry to God in penitence and faith. When we devote much attention to satisfying our bodies, but little to satisfying our souls, Lord, have mercy. When we like to be regarded as followers of Jesus, but avoid making sacrifices for him, Christ, have mercy. When we say we love God, but fail to care for our brothers and sisters in need, Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect, the special prayer for today. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading will be read by Sally McGregor. The reading is from Romans chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. And these are words of encouragement. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbour for his good, to build him up. For even Christ did not please himself, but, as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Amen. And now our sermon will be preached by Olive, a licensed lay minister in our ministry team. A few years ago, I bought a book entitled From Me to You. It was a journal that a grandmother could fill in for her granddaughter. It had a series of questions to be answered about my life, about my parents, about my grandparents, my early childhood, my school days, my romance and marriage and the children that I had, and all the important milestones of my life. 
There are also questions about Rebecca, my granddaughter, how I felt when she arrived and what my hopes and fears were for her throughout her life. It took me quite a time to answer all those questions, but I don't think I have ever given a present that was so appreciated. She told me that whenever she felt down or misunderstood or had a sense of failure, she took out the journal. And as she read it, she was encouraged to know that whatever knocks she would take in life or was going through at that time, she had someone who would always support and love her. She was encouraged to hear about her ancestors too and the Christian heritage that they'd bequeathed to her. I didn't realize when I gave it to her how much she would value it. Well, my favorite character in the Bible is someone who probably never realized what an encouragement he was to people and is even now. Joseph came from Cyprus. He was a Jew who probably was in Jerusalem for the Pentecost celebrations and he heard Peter preach and had been converted. He obviously quickly made his mark with the apostles and they were so impressed with him that they gave him a nickname, the nickname of Barnabas, the encourager. And that nickname stuck and forever after people forgot his original name. He's mentioned many times in the New Testament, particularly in the Acts, but he cre creeps in and crops up several times in Paul's epistles. He could easily be overlooked because the Apostle Paul was the more important character and rose to such prominence. Barnabas seemed like a bit of a sidekick. But the picture we get of Barnabas is of a very good man and very warm. Luke describes him as a good man full of the Holy Spirit and faith and a great evangelist because we read in chapter 11 of Luke of Acts that he brought many people to the Lord. Well, what's the evidence for the fact that he was called this wonderful encourager? How did he encourage and how? Well, first of all, he encouraged the church leaders. <clears throat> and leaders often need a lot of encouragement. Why did the apostles name him the encourager? It's not difficult to imagine, is it, how it was for the apostles in those early days. Thousands had been converted. Some were pilgrims who stayed on in Jerusalem and had not yet returned home. Most needed teaching about their newly found faith. There were always widows who needed support. The leaders suddenly had new responsibilities in the early church. They were also constantly living with the threat of persecution. So although it was amazing and exciting times, I'm sure they needed a Barnabas. They needed someone ready to encourage them to recognize their authority and to trust their leadership. And Barnabas was there. It was his support that earned him that nickname, the encouraging one. And then in Acts chapter four, we read that he encouraged the poor and the needy. We find that Barnabas was a very generous man. He was right there when the apostles held a pledge day. He had some land, probably in Cyprus, and he generously sold it and brought the money to the apostles. It was his love for Christ that made him willing to give something that had been precious to him. What an encouragement for those poor and needy people 
who had very little. And later, in the Acts, we find that Barnabas with Paul went with gifts from the Antioch church to the poor in Jerusalem, even though it was a dangerous mission. The recipients must have been very encouraged to know that someone cared for them from far away. And then the third thing we realise about Barnabas was that he was encouraging to the newly converted. In chapter 9 of the Acts, we read about the Apostle Paul, who'd had that wonderful experience on the road to Damascus, and he came to Jerusalem. But all the Christians there were suspicious of him. Who wouldn't be? After all, they'd seen him participating in the stoning of Stephen. They couldn't believe that Paul had really changed. But it was Barnabas who took him under his wing and convinced the others of Paul's sincerity. And later in chapter 11, we read when a great number of people were converted in Antioch, it was Barnabas who was sent to nurture the new Christians. And when we read that he met them, he was glad and he encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Paul's gifts as a pioneering evangelist on his first missionary journey could flourish because Barnabas was alongside him, encouraging and building up the new churches they had planted. And fourthly, Barnabas was encouraging to those who thought they'd failed. Barnabas had a cousin called Mark who accompanied them on the first missionary journey with Paul. But for some reason, he defected and returned home. Maybe he was ill or afraid. We don't know. But because of this, Paul didn't want him on the next journey. And they had such a sharp disagreement, Barnabas and Paul, that they had to part company. But Barnabas was willing to give the young man a chance, a second chance. It seems that Paul was later sorry because he urges in his letter to Timothy, get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. But Barnabas stood along someone, beside someone who thought they had failed. So think how much the church owes to Barnabas, the son of encouragement, as he's called. He encouraged the inexperienced church leaders. He gave generously to the needy. He supported the new converts and those who needed their confidence building. He befriended all he came into contact with. And because he was an encourager, The knock-on effect was that Paul was able to go out and preach to the Gentiles and write 13 letters. Also, through Barnabas' encounter with Mark, we gained the second gospel. Barnabas never wrote a book, as far as we know. But he encouraged two men who wrote over half of the New Testament. Well... What does that have to do with us? We're urged in the Bible to be like Barnabas. According to the New Testament, Christians need the strength and support of one another to keep going. And in the list of the spiritual gifts in Romans chapter 12, we find encouragement is included, a spiritual gift. It might not be spectacular, but it is a spiritual gift. And the reading that we had urged us to build one another up and encourage one another. That verse was in it, those who are strong should bear with the failings of the weak. But it's extraordinary, isn't it, how difficult it is sometimes to do. It seems easier to knock down 
not build up. Easier to criticise than to positively encourage. Maybe if we thought more about the times when we feel discouraged, we would understand how vital encouragement is. What is it that makes us want to give up? Is it when we don't feel appreciated or we feel taken for granted? Perhaps it's when we feel lonely or friendless or when we feel misunderstood. Perhaps it's when we compare ourselves to others and feel we are failures. It's at these times that we need a Barnabas. Are we prepared to be a Barnabas to others? Amen. And now we affirm our faith in God. Let us declare it. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayers of intercession will be led by Julie Fell. Father God, we pray about situations of violence, hostility and injustice. We pray that all leaders will strive for peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for families struggling with poverty disadvantage or disability. Bless all who seek to bring healing, encouragement and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are lonely or isolated, who feel rejected or cannot find employment. May we bring company, help, encouragement and support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those burdened with worry, ill health, pain or bereavement. It's especially for those we know, including my own parents, Henry and Pamela Coupland, who live in a small village called Blythe near Doncaster. My father is very ill at the moment. We pray for healing and for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring our prayers in the strong name of Jesus Christ, who, in his earthly life, always specially cared for those in need. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to have a second hymn, much more recent, but one that many people have found immensely encouraging. O oh God, you search me. O oh God, you search me and you know me. All my thoughts lie open to your gaze. When I walk or lie down, you are before me ever the maker and keeper of my days. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from 
from afar and with love everlasting you besiege me in every moment of life and death you are before a word is on my tongue Lord you have known its meaning through and through you are with me beyond my understanding God of my present my past and future too And now we draw towards the close of our service using the early 6th century prayer of St. Benedict. Almighty God, give us wisdom to perceive you, intellect to understand you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, a vision to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you and with those whom you love during these difficult times and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>